Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto and Tire Rack. In the long and wonderful history of the automobile, perhaps no vehicle has been as synonymous with blazing trails, exploration, and getting dirty in the farthest reaches of the globe like the Land Rover, and more specifically, the Defender. Now, I know what I just said is considered blasphemy among Jeep fans, but consider this little factoid. In the 20th century, the first vehicle ever seen by 60% of the developing world was the Land Rover. And that doesn't happen unless you're driving a vehicle where no vehicle has ever gone before. They have a great deal of ground clearance. They have a wonderful combination of engines, transmissions, and transfer cases with gear ratios that make it very easy to take a large load of people or cargo over very difficult terrain over and over for miles and miles and kilometers and kilometers. Trevor Griffiths is the owner of British 4x4 Specialists in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, and he's been driving and working on Land Rovers of all kinds his entire life. But even after all these years, they're still able to impress him. I suspect the vehicle most of the time can outperform my abilities. So you try an obstacle, you accomplish that, you get over it, everything's still intact. You're like, okay, well, let's, let's see if we can do this. Until 1983, the Land Rover Defender was simply called a Land Rover, built by the British automaker Rover. In 1983, the name was updated to the Land Rover 90 and 110, referring to the wheelbases of the two models. And then finally in 1990, the Defender name was introduced to help distinguish it from the company's new Discovery model. And then in 1993, Defenders were officially being sold in the U.S. But regardless of what it's been called over the years, driving one has always been on my auto bucket list. So today is particularly exciting, not just because it's my first ever time driving a Defender, but because I get a chance to see if it lives up to its legendary status and enjoy it in its natural habitat off-road. Unlike today's modern SUVs and CUVs, the Defender has always been much more at home as far from asphalt as possible. In fact, driving it on pavement is nothing special. It's noisy, bumpy, and about as precise as a tractor. But none of this matters, not even a little. Because unlike the SUVs of today, getting off the pavement and onto the dirt is what this thing lives for. If I'm being totally honest, I've never been a huge fan of modern SUVs. The 4Runner, the Land Cruiser, the Rubicon, the Defender are what I consider to be a true sport utility vehicle. They're not happy running errands. They don't want to be going to an office or being stuck in traffic. They want to be out here in the wild, finding the deepest, darkest corners of the globe. And then when they get there, turn around and find something dirtier. So after spending an entire day behind the wheel of one of man's greatest automotive creations, what's my verdict? It is awesome. Just like a great sports car, like a Cayman or a Miata, inspires you to drive faster and harder this thing is almost daring me to find something steeper and rockier and muddier. And no matter what kind of terrain is thrown at you, there is an undeniable confidence that nothing can get in your way, even when you're faced with a particularly technical descent. Nice, keep all the wheels on the ground. Good choice, good choice. <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> but alas, as of January 29th, 2016, those moments of excitement are coming to an end. On that day at 9.22 a.m., the final Land Rover Defender, a 90 soft top, rolled off the assembly line in England, ending a 68-year production run. But don't worry, more than two million were made, and of those, an estimated 70% are still running in some form somewhere in the world today. So you should have plenty of chances to experience this legend for yourself. Just be ready to get dirty.